Hi, it's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD, and owner of some acne prone skin. I have oily skin, and that usually goes hand in hand with acne. So today I'm going to be giving you my top 5 tips for acne prone skin. If you like this sort of video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. A bit of background about my skin, it's always been quite acne prone and oily because of genetics, and it's been this way since I was about 13, which is... 18 years ago. As I learned more about skincare, I helped my skin improve because if you look after it well, that does get rid of a lot of the issues. But it can't get rid of everything, so for example, I still have hormonal acne, which is much harder to treat with topical treatments and generally you'll need to take medications for it. I did take the combined oral contraceptive pill for a while and my skin got better, but it had other side effects that I wasn't entirely happy with, and so I'm currently not using it. My skin is still so much better than it was before. So here are the five best tips I have. All of these are in part science-based, but some of these are mostly just practical. My first tip is to use a gentle cleanser. When I first started having acne in the early 2000s as a 13-year-old, my dad bought me a menthol cleanser from Avon which had pointy microplastic scrubbing bits. It was bright blue and it made me feel like I could really scrub away the dirt. Pain is my friend. I deserve this. As I started buying my own skincare products, I tended to use brands like Clean and Clear and Proactive, which have really drying cleansers and scrubs and alcohol-based toners that stung my face. And that made it feel really effective because it hurt. And because it must be hurting, it must be hurting the bacteria even more. This is one of the big myths about skincare, and luckily it seems to be going away. But in reality, hurting yourself is not really a good idea. Dirty skin is not one of the main causes of acne. It can exacerbate acne, but gentle cleansing is enough. Cleansing your skin too harshly leads to inflammation and irritation, which also contributes to acne, and it doesn't let your skin recover. High pH cleansers and constantly disturbing your skin with cleansing makes it easier for acne bacteria to spread and get a foothold on your skin. Gentle Cleanser also made my skin less dehydrated, which made it feel less oily as well. And if you want to find out more about how to choose and use a Gentle Cleanser, you can check out the Lab Muffin Guide to Basic Skincare, which goes through how to build a routine from scratch. Tip number two for acne prone skin is to limit your access to mirrors. I found that one of my worst habits, which I still have, is picking at my spots and having prolonged picking sessions. Picking at your spots makes your irritation worse, and if you pick too hard, you end up with scarring. I found myself scrutinizing my skin and picking at spots that were barely spots. I was picking at spots that weren't ready, I was pulling off loose skin flakes. When I was in my early 20s, I went on a trip with my family to Hong Kong, and I stayed at a hotel where I didn't have any mirrors near me. And I found that my skin managed to recover a whole heap at that time. I used to have a really flaking, dry, constantly irritated nose, and it completely recovered during this trip, simply because I wasn't constantly irritating it. And so when I got home, I decided I would get rid of any mirrors that were in my study area. So if you are also really prone to picking at your spots continuously like me, it really helps if you get rid of mirrors near where you procrastinate, so perhaps where you study. You can limit yourself to picking in the bathroom, for example, or after a shower, somewhere where you're not just gonna stay there for ages. My next tip is on how you should squeeze a pimple. Some people think that you should never squeeze spots, but I personally find that extracting it is sometimes better than leaving it alone, but only if you do it right, and that means gently. Firstly, you need to make sure it's hygienic. If not, then you're really just making extra bacteria go in, it goes deeper, it invades the rest of your skin and it spreads the infection. You want to limit the damage, so make sure you don't squeeze it until it's actually ready to be squeezed. If your spots aren't quite ready to be squeezed, it's best to leave them and just exfoliate, and your skin should be able to get rid of them on its own. So if you're going to squeeze a pimple, it's best if you have clean hands, if you clean your face first, if you wrap your nails with tissue or use cotton buds, and if you lance the pimple so you stick a needle in it so that there's a space for the pus to escape before you squeeze it, so it'll come out the right way instead of going deeper into the skin. My fourth tip for acne prone skin is to change your pillowcase regularly, and this is especially the case if you aren't sleeping on your back. There's a few different reasons for this. Firstly, oil from skin on your face 
bacteria and sebum, all of this stuff ends up on your pillow, and this is all comedogenic. This will slowly oxidize with the air and will turn into stuff that's even more comedogenic. If you use hair conditioner, it contains lots of ingredients that tend to break people out, so changing your pillowcase can stop this from pressing into your face every night. And keep in mind that you sleep for about 8 hours a day, which is a third of your life. So some people change their pillowcases every night, or every few days, or once a week, depending on how sensitive your skin is to this stuff. So it's worth just trying to change your pillowcase more often and see if this makes a difference. My fifth and final tip for this video is to look at using some anti-acne actives. There are four main factors that lead to acne, and they are inflammation, clogged pores, bacteria, and excess oil. So you're looking for actives that target these four things. Firstly, you can try some exfoliants, so you can try some gentle physical exfoliants and chemical exfoliants, and so these gentle exfoliants will help you get rid of clogged pores without causing too much inflammation. If you're interested in finding out more, I have a video on exfoliation and a free exfoliation guide that you can download. Another really effective anti-acne ingredient is benzoyl peroxide. And this can be a little bit irritating though if your skin is prone to that, so just use it with caution. You can also look at using a retinoid in your routine, which is a vitamin A derivative. Some of these are available over the counter, so for example, differin and retinol. You can also get some with a prescription, so for example, tretinoin. If your acne is a bit more severe, so if it's a bit deeper, then you can also look at using some oral medications. So for example, isotretinoin, which is also called Accutane, Spironolactone, and also the oral contraceptive pill. So if you want to look more into that, talk to your doctor. If you want more tips on how to deal with hyperpigmentation after the acne is gone, then you can also check out my hyperpigmentation routine. I hope you liked this video and found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and you can also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. You can also follow me on Instagram at labmuffinbeautyscience, and you can check out my blog for more nerding out about beauty. See you next time!